A certain magical index is now 20 years old. It spawned a giant franchise which rivals Fate and One Piece, while becoming one of the best-selling light novel series of all time. It's a series that is ridiculously popular in the East, while having a smaller but absolutely insane cult following of diehard fans in the West. But how did Index come to life? What exactly made it so successful in Japan and China? And why do so many fans still care about an old light novel series that doesn't abide by present day standards? Let's begin. We don't know much about the mysterious author of A Certain Magical Index, as his identity is a complete mystery. He simply goes by the pen name Kamachi Kazuma. Considering how fast he writes books and how utterly insane he is, it wouldn't be surprising if Kamachi was the first ever AI light novel author. Anyway, Kamachi recently graduated high school back in the early 2000s and dreamed of becoming a writer. He couldn't simply upload a crappy Isekai story to a Japanese web novel site with the hopes of it getting popular, just like the current state of the light novel industry in Japan. Kamachi had to do things the hard way and submitted a story called Schrodinger's City to the 9th Dengeki Game Novel Prize in 2002. However, he didn't pass the third round as the writing was criticised as being too rough. No wonder he writes about an unlucky protagonist. Kamachi's fortunes made a complete 180, as his work attracted the attention of Kazuma Miki, an editor at Dengeki Bunko, who asked Kamachi to write something special. Kamachi, Miki and the other editors began to cook ideas of a few test novels for a year, as the visual novel illustrator Haimura Kiyotaka joined the team for what would become Kamachi's first published series. Initially titled as Last Memory, the story's name was changed to Toaru Majitsuno Index, or A Certain Magical Index, which was first published on the 10th of April 2004, 100 years after the Book of the Law was foretold to the occultist Alistair Crowley by the Holy Guardian Angel Iwas, which would help form some of the basis for Kamachi's story, as he was heavily inspired by Alistair Crowley and other occult authors. Alistair viewed magic as a form of science, which then gave birth to the magic science dynamic of the story. Index was intended as a one-shot novel, but its success was unprecedented as it became a bestseller as Kamachi was prompted to quickly continue the story, with a certain magical Index Volume 2 being released just two months later in June 2004, thus starting one of Dengeki Bunko's most successful IPs. Kazuma Miki stated, After it was released to the public, to be blunt, it sold like crazy. Shortly after the official release date, we had to do a reprint half the size of the original printing. It was on a Monday, I still remember it now. It was quite an achievement for an unknown newcomer. A certain magical index occurs in a somewhat futuristic world, almost identical to the modern reality we live in, with some exceptions. Most notably, the world of Index is divided into two sides, science and magic, the former of which is the main setting of the story, in the form of Academy City, a city-state walled off from the rest of Tokyo, which boasts advanced technology decades ahead of all other countries, while most notably developing the students of the city into psychic ability using espers. Espers are also given ranks, depending on how strong they actually are. Are. On the flip side, the magic side is formed of the world's churches and different organizations of magicians known as cabals. Unlike Academy City, where esper development is common knowledge worldwide, magic is kept as a closely guarded secret from those who are not practitioners. With the main religions and mythologies of the world, both past and present, gatekeeping the hell out of it. Over the course of Index's story, the two sides of the world try and avoid starting World War 3 against each other in a Cold War-esque standoff as tensions begin to rise. One Level Zero Esper, called Kamijo Toma, has a strange power that both science and magic can't fully explain, known as Imagine Breaker, which can nullify both Esper powers and magic via a simple touch from his right hand. Consequently, Imagine Breaker brings him bad luck, 
since it allegedly negates the blessings from God and severs the red string of fate. But such things aren't taken seriously in Academy City, where facts and logic prevail over superstitions that cannot be scientifically proven. Toma meets a gluttonous nun called Index on his balcony, who just so happens to be the grimoire library of the Anglican Church, with over 10,000 toxic magical books in her head, combined with a perfect memory. Index is allegedly being chased by rogue magicians who want to use the grimoires in her head for their own agendas, forcing Toma into action against the magic side as he protects Index from harm. Where magic and science collide, the story begins. Interestingly, Index was the first character that Kamachi thought of when creating the story, but he needed another character who wouldn't hesitate to charge into danger without a thought, to save Index who was being persecuted. Therefore, Kamachi designed Kamijo Toma, a boy who belonged to the science side, acting as a contrast from Index. The espers of Academy City were then devised to show that Imagine Breaker was an irregularity, even within the environment he was living in. With Index being the quintessential representative of the strange world of magic, Misaka Mikoto then similarly acted as the guide to all things science, helping present the level system with Misaka being at the top rank, while Toma being at the very lowest, helping introduce the concept of espers to the reader. Then Accelerator, the villain who later became a protagonist, acted as the complete opposite to Toma, with how their colour patterns being a swap of each other, and Accelerator being the strongest level 5 esper, who seems very powerful on the surface, but is actually vulnerable inside, while Toma appears weak on the outside, but has a willpower that surpasses logic itself. Initially, Academy City and the Science Side were intended to be a mere backdrop to the events of the Magic Side, or a setting where the Magic Side of the world could easily contrast from the futuristic yet familiar location of modern day Japan. Kamachi said, I described Academy City as having lots of wind turbines as a symbol of the science side, but they really aren't that futuristic. My intention was to make a contrast with the current world by having things that exist but are uncommon to be everywhere. As the magic side of the world was written first, with science being the complete opposite to it, I started it as a story only about magic. However, to make the magical element stand out, I needed some kind of power to oppose it. For example, you can have them defeat a normal special forces unit, or see how powerful some magic is compared to a tank shell. Having something to compare it to makes it all easier to understand. If I was going to do that, I felt it would have been better to have it all bound together in a consistent worldview that have more scattered elements the magic is compared to. And that was how the science element of the story came about. Kamachi said it was not until volume 3 where he expanded upon Academy City's lore and inner workings that the science side gained equal footing and the story then becomes more about magic versus science. When asked how he would describe the Index series in a few words, Kamachi simply said, the story of a protagonist charging in and beating down magicians or espers who carry complex problems. Kono Light Novel Gasugoi, a guide to light novels which ranks the most popular series and characters, has regularly featured Index as one of the top ranked series. Index has won the best light novel of the year in 2011 and came second place under SAO in the following two years, while Misaka Mikoto holds the record for the most top ranked female character wins, with the title of best girl in nine different years. Index was also successful in the best male category, with Kamijo Toma winning the best boy title three times. Index was subsequently ranked the second best light novel of the decade of 2010s, just behind SAO, and in 2020 was inducted into the Kono Light Novel Gasugoi Hall of Fame, meaning both the Index series and its characters are no longer included in the rankings after this date. In May 2010, it was reported that a certain magical index became Dengeki Bunko's number one bestseller, and it became the first Dengeki Bunko series to sell over 10 million Impressive. copies, with Index and its many side stories and spin offs later becoming the best selling light novel franchise of all time in Japan, with over 30 million sales from its debut to June 2018. Index held this title 
for almost five years, with Tensura surpassing Index with 35 million sales in Japan and 5 million abroad, which was reported back in February 2023. Notably, Index's sale figures slowly reduced over the course of time, but this was possibly due to only physical sales being reported as opposed to digital sales, as ebooks became increasingly popular as the 2010s progressed. Komachi Kazuma also gained a reputation as a legendary figure of the Japanese light novel industry, where he was simultaneously right multiple novels at once, while also working on bonus work such as spin-offs or other writing concepts. With Kamachi somehow writing a novel every month 24 times in a row during the period from 2015 to 2017, leading some fans to believe Kamachi is not in fact human, but a machine. Kamachi did slow down his release schedule considerably after this period, but still remains a very consistent author who rarely takes hiatus, writing even when he's sick. Kamachi explained his unusual writing habits by saying his way of taking breaks is also to write, with his hobby also being writing. Yeah, I think Kamachi really loves writing. Readers of the Index Light novel have praised the series for its compelling universe, unique ideas, its two distinct power systems, and its large cast of dynamic characters. However, it has also received criticism due to its fan service elements that some side characters don't feature enough in later volumes, the lack of main character deaths, or how the status quo rarely changes. Nevertheless, fans of the series tend to acknowledge these flaws. Some disagree with them and don't think they're flaws in of themselves, or others simply don't care as much about the bad things as Index's appeal simply overshadows any negative elements it has. Index was first adapted into a manga serialized in Monthly Shonen Gangan in April 2007, with the first volume of the manga releasing on November 10th, 2007, and Ogino Chuya being chosen as the mangaka. Concerning the manga for both Index and Railgun, Kamachi said, even though both are from the same world, a lot is left to the individual artists, so they're fun to read. I like getting a chance to reread these things in a more objective way. This would become a trend with Kamachi's latest spin offs of Index, with him sending general plot summaries and notes, which will later be expanded upon by his mangakas and editors and then turned into a new story. Despite not being 100% involved in the story of the spin offs, Kamachi is still credited as the author on all his manga adaptations. The Index manga largely followed the events of the light novel, but it notably removed both the Deep Blood arc and the Angel Fall arc in order to quickly get to the points of the story which focused on Misuka Makoto's character, as she became the most popular character in the franchise. After receiving a radio drama featuring some of the characters being voiced for the first time, Index then received its first anime adaptation, bringing to life the events of the first six volumes of the novel. Index Season 1 debuted in October 2008, animated by JC Staff, and notably changed some of the events of the Deep Blood arc and the Angel Fall arc respectively. Index would receive subsequent anime seasons with Index 2 in 2010 and Index 3 in 2018. An anime original movie was also created following a brand new story titled Miracle of Endymion, which released in 2013. Index's manga spin-offs A Certain Scientific Railgun and A Certain Scientific Accelerator also received anime adaptations, with Railgun receiving having three seasons and Accelerator having one. With the long gap between anime seasons between Index 2 and 3, many fans were unhappy that one of the most successful light novel series was not being prioritized over its competitors. With fans both online and in person frequently asking the editor of the light novels and producer of the anime, Mickey, about if there were any plans for a third season. Mickey kept saying that there wasn't any plans until Index 3 was announced in October 2017. Miki states that there were previous talks whether to do a remake of the previous seasons due to how much time had passed since seasons 1 and 2, but Index 3 was prioritized to conclude the story of the original novel. Index 3 received a lot of criticism due to it not having enough episodes despite series overseer and director 
Hiroshi Nishikiori, requesting to the production company that more episodes will be granted and refusing to cut out important events and lines. As a result, Index 3 was granted a mere two more episodes, putting it at 26. It was still not nearly enough to adapt eight full volumes of the light novel, resulting in the pacing of the anime being far too fast for viewers to keep up with. Index has now spanned for 20 years, with it still ongoing with the light novels. Genesis Testament followed on from the original light novel series, dubbed as Old Testament, as well as the sequel to OT, known as New Testament. With the Index light novels currently having 55 volumes from the main series, plus many different spin-offs and side stories, and with no end to the story in sight, it can make getting into Index a daunting experience. But at the same time, the length of Index has its own appeal as the experience from reading the light novels feels far greater than a story at times with it being a fully fleshed out universe that comes across as realistic with so many expanding plot elements and characters in this world with so many adventures within the toara universe waiting to be explored due to this it has drawn comparison by some to the marvel cinematic universe or a comic franchise that has one continuous story with many sub-story branches that explore Explore different characters and aspects of the same world that often do cross over or blend with the events of the main plot. Index has many spin offs, such as Railgun, Accelerator, A Certain Dark Side's Item, A Certain Scientific Dark Matter, amongst many more. But Railgun proved to be the most popular, with it even having later spin offs of its own, such as A Certain Scientific Astral Buddy. Railgun cemented Index's popularity by focusing on the very popular Misaka Mikoto and retelling some events from Index with a different perspective. Railgun was a huge hit, especially in China. China, with the Chinese equivalent of YouTube, Billy Billy, being named after Miska's nickname, Biri Biri. Railgun Season 3 also had over 300 million views in China while it was airing in 2020. Railgun is often seen as more popular than Index, despite it being a spin-off due to the success of the Railgun anime and it being more critically acclaimed compared to Index's adaptation. But as Railgun was based on a manga, it proved easier to adapt into animation than Index, with its original source material being a light novel. This has led to somewhat of a misconception among some viewers that Railgun is the superior series to Index, when the light novels of Index arguably surpass even the peaks of Railgun overall. Index helped popularize many light novel tropes that became a mainstay of series which followed it, such as the magic high school genre, the underdog character who is actually stronger than he is on paper, and psychotic characters with white hair, amongst other stereotypes. Magic and fantasy light novel series did indeed exist before Index, but it is arguably thanks to Index that it became a mainstay of the industry due to the heights of popularity it reached, competing with even SAO when it was at its prime popularity. Index is a series that is sometimes forgotten about in the West, where it never reached the same level of popularity as it did in Japan. It retained a cult following, but never to the mainstream extent of other fantasy light novel adaptations such as SAO, ReZero, Tensura, and Overlord, amongst others. Nevertheless, Index is a special series in many people's hearts due to its legacy and influence. And with the light novels and spin-offs still releasing to this day, it keeps hardcore fans of the series engaged and eager to open Kamachi's next book. In addition to active games such as the mobile gacha Toaru Imaginary Fest, despite the mixed reputation of Index's anime, Index is still regarded as one of the greatest light novels of all time. And with the 20th anniversary this year and Kamachi Kazuma announcing there are special events on the way, the Toaru franchise doesn't seem to be disappearing anytime soon. No one knows what the future holds for Toaru. Will it ever end? Will it surpass Gwyn Saga as the longest light novel series of all time? Will we get a fourth season of the anime? Who knows? But no matter what, Index will forever stay in our memories. Subscribe to the channel for plenty more to Aru content and news updates, and check out these videos on screen if you're interested to start the series, or check out my big review of why the novel is a masterpiece. I would also like to say a massive thank you to everyone who has worked on a series, as I can't imagine life without it. Until next time.